Hello, my name is Levin, and this is a video on how I made a game in under 48 hours for the Shenana Jam 2019. So, last year I submitted a game for the 2018 Shenana Jam. You can actually find a video of it on my channel under the Games I Made playlist. The game was simple to say the least. It was very flawed, but I finished it, more or less. But a year had passed since then, and the 2019 jam was about to happen. So, for this jam, we had three different categories to choose from. There were Christmas Eve, DNA Chaos, and Wrenches 101. I ended up going with DNA Chaos for my category. First of all, before starting work on my game, I needed an idea. DNA Chaos. The first thing that came to mind to me was an amalgamation of genetic ooze coming together to make a slime thing. So I needed to come up with a single driving mechanic behind this game. I threw around some ideas, like taking powers from enemies' DNA, kind of like Kirby. But that was complicated, and in my opinion, too similar to Kirby. So what do slimes do exactly? They bounce, and probably smell bad, and... They stick. There it was, I would make a game in which you are a slime that sticks to walls. Recently, there was a Ludium Jam that happened, that I missed. In which the theme was, your life is currency. I like that idea, so to drive home the theme of DNA, I made it so DNA strands are both your ammo and your HP. If you shoot, it takes half a strand, and if you get hit, it takes an entire strand of DNA. You have to make a trade-off, and not miss any shots. So now that the idea was finalized, it was time to begin. As usual, I booted up Game Maker and got to work making this game. Before I even started, I grabbed some free assets from Aragoff's tiny 2D platformer shooter on itch.io. Thank you, Aragoff, for providing these assets for the stage. They certainly look better than if I made them. Next, I set up a basic platformer. It had movement and jumping. And next, it was time to set up wall sticking. So, wall sticking. This was the single most complicated thing I had to do for this project. I don't want to get too far into the specifics for this video, but the basic way it works is first of all, it detects if it's on a wall and in which direction that wall is. Like if it's just on the ground normally, the wall direction, or ground direction, is down. And if it's sticking to the wall on the left, ground direction is left. Then depending on the ground direction, movement is changed. If the ground is up or down, the character's HSPD or H speed is changed by the input. If the ground is to the left or right, the VSPD is changed. And if the character is on any wall except for just below it, gravity is set to zero. Also, if the player runs into a wall, then it will change the ground direction and change the wall it's sticking to. Now I realized that jumping would not only be confusing the program, but it wouldn't work in all in context of game design. So I just removed it. Now I had a platformer without any jumping, just sticking. Next I added shooting into the game. By this time I had been working on the game for most of the day, and it was getting kinda late. I was tired of programming, so I made some proper sprites for the player, enemies, and also updated the tile sets by filling in some missing pieces. Day 2 So it was the second and final day of the game jam. I had a good start on making this game, with the movement, most of the sprites, and the shooting all completed. I still had to make the enemies, the DNA, health, and ammo system, and finally some levels to finish the game. So, first of all, I started work on the very first enemy. This enemy is a scientist who just runs the player while flailing their arms madly. I made them have two different states, idle and attacking. If they see the player, which is determined by a collision line drawn between the player and the enemy. Which, a collision line is just a line that checks and see if there are any walls between the player and the enemy. In the idle state, they just stand there, and in the attacking state, they run at the player. Pretty simple overall. Next up was the second enemy. This enemy is a, a turret that shoots at the player. The turret is made up of two different objects, the base and the gun. The base practically does nothing other than create the gun, and the gun on the other hand has three states. The idle, which is when it can't see the player just like the first enemy. It doesn't do anything. The second state is a rotate state. If the turret sees the player, it starts rotating to face the player. Once it finishes the rotating, it goes into the final state, the shooting state, where it cools down for a few seconds before shooting a bullet that damages the player. Next, I had to make a DNA system that handled health and ammo for the player. First of all, I made the sprite for the GUI that shows the health. It wasn't great, but it was serviceable. Next up, I made it so the image index for the sprite, aka the frame number, was set to the DNA count of the player. Then it was just simply subtracting DNA whenever the player shoots or gets hurt. Next came making the player get knocked back when hurt. 
So when the player is hit by a bullet, it checks which direction the bullet is coming from, which took me way too long to figure out how to do. Then it adds to the HSPD depending on which direction it gets hit from. I then added screen shake, which I've always wanted to do, but I never figured out how to do it. But it was just as simple as setting up a camera that always follows the player, ex except when a global variable named screen shake is set to true. Then it changes its X and Y randomly before resetting to following the player. It wasn't quite as good as I'd hoped, but it was, once again, serviceable. Next, I made the levels. Nothing too noteworthy here, it just took a long time to do. Finally, I added a few more pieces to the tile set and level pieces, like a door that opens when all enemies are killed, and more corner pieces. I wanted to make the background more interesting, so I made objects for pipes that animate and glow green. I also added little text bubbles for a tutorial, and made an opening cutscene where you break out of a little tube and a scientist watching you flies out of this dimension. But that's all for this game jam. I submitted it a few hours before the final end date, and here's a sample of how it all turned out. The game is called Unresponsible dna -ing. So that's about all for this jam and this video. So subscribe if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.